welcome back to the continuation of our lecture on synthetic wigs. Now, after we have had um, the direct sequence, that's the synthetic and the conversion, the, on the conversion of ethanol to propanol and from ethanol to methanol, or in other words, we have seen the step up and the step down reaction. Let's try to uh, analyze a synthetic wig that came in June 2000, uh, in, sorry, in Northwest Month 2011. Okay? So let's look at it. Uh, maybe you might just look at it and then the, you have been given just three compounds. Alright? You have been given just the structure of three compounds in the whole synthetic wood. And you're like, what? What am I going to do with this? Okay? Because you have a lot of compounds, you have a lot of um, letters and letters everywhere. And you've just been given three, um, three compounds, or let's say two. Okay? You've just been given two compounds. Uh, let me say three. Okay, because there's supposed to be another one here, CH3, um, CH, OH, C, O, O, H. Okay, so you have three compounds that you have been given and then one reagent. So when you look at it, it might seem to be very difficult, but it is actually very, very, very simple. Alright, now let's look at it. From here, okay, this is my compound B and this is my compound I. The very first thing is when I go to A, I go to B, I go to C, to D, I look at, um, I look at G, alright? When I look at G, my G is an, is, is an amide, okay? We just saw it in the previous video. This is an amide. And this amide is a carboxylic acid derivative. We saw, we saw that it was derived by adding concentrated ammonia, okay, to a carboxylic acid to be able to obtain the the amide okay and then um looking at f also we see that f is also a derivative uh, is, in fact it is coming from a carboxylic acid tell you that e or z has a carboxylic acid component in it so that makes that already makes this part to look here very clear then another part is that these compounds here are having three carbon atoms okay but if you look at it if, if d is having three carbon atoms then G is having to be carbon atoms. It means that um, there is surely a reaction that has occurred because at the end you're going to have A. And A is having just two carbon atoms. It means there is a step down reaction that is occurring this way. And if this is this is A, okay, if this is A, which is an alkene, and it's being converted, or maybe B is in, although B is being converted to A, B, that means that A is derived from B. It means that B is two carbon atoms. Alright? And if this two, two carbon atom compound has been given uh, has actually gone through a series of reactions to be able to give us a compound that is like a carboxylic acid or uh, which is having three carbon atoms, it means that there has been a step up this way, and then this way there is a step down from what I just explained. So now let's move to it. Okay, let's look at it. Now we know that this is a carboxylic acid from the previous notion that we have, okay. This one here should surely be a carboxylic acid compound, and this is A. Of course, B could be converted. How do we do to increase the number of carbon atoms on the main chain? By adding um, cyanide, alright? By adding cyanide to the compound most of the times, okay, in order to step up the level of the number of uh, carbon atoms in the, in the main chain in an organic molecule. So what we do is that, I will consider this to be CH3, okay? C H2, um, it could be Br, okay, it could be Br, or it could be C, or, uh, C or so it could be a halo, so it should be a halo arcane. So I could take it to be uh, a bromoethane, or it could still be chloroethane. Now, if it is bromoethane, and I'm converting it to A, remember, we just saw a reaction like this, alright, under elimination reaction, and I said it is called the halo halogenation. So if I'm um, how do we when we convert a halogen to a, 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 a two elimination reaction to A, we can use concentrated potassium hydroxide in alcohol under reflux. Concentrated potassium hydroxide in alcohol under reflux. And when you carry out that reaction, okay, you're going to obtain C. You're going to obtain C. So you are going to obtain A. So when you carry when you add a concentrated alcoholic potassium under reflux, you are going to um, eliminate um, the HBr from this compound to form an alkene. Now, if this is a halo alkene, it means that <coughs> I could be able to add a metal cyanide in this place. 
So I'm going to add Cl minus, uh, Cl minus, okay, a metal cyanide will be potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide in alcohol, all right, as we saw in the first synthetic group, and, and I warm. So when I take Cl minus in alcohol and I warm, I could be able to obtain CH3, CH2, CN, all right. So the cyanide there will be replacing the halogen, okay, to form a, 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 a nitrogen. So this one is going to be called propane nitrogen, and this one is bromoethane, or you can call this one cyanoethane. Now from the cyanoethane, I could be able to obtain my carboxylic acid. This, all of this is springing up because I, I actually identified that Z was a carboxylic acid. And if it was a carboxylic acid, how many carbon was it? It was three, because this one is derived from Z directly. And if it's three carbon atoms, it means that from here there has been a step down. So I automatically just figure out uh, the reactions of step up and step uh, sorry there has been a step up. So I figure out the reaction of step up which I know and then I bring it into motion. So for me, I cannot be able to convert this CH3 CH2 CN to a carboxylic acid. So I'm going to have CH3 CH2 COOH. Okay, I'm going to have CH3 CH2 COOH. And I will use acidified water. Okay, so the reagent is going to be acidified water. Remember, we already saw this. And I boil. Okay, I use acidified water here and I boil. And I convert this cyanide compound to CH3 CH2 COOH. Now, this is my carboxylic acid. Of course, Converting a carboxylic acid, as you saw from, uh, on the second um, uh, synthetic group when we were converting uh, methanol to methanol, I could be able to convert a carboxylic acid to an amide using concentrated ammonia in alcohol, which probably is ethanol, okay, under heat. So when you heat that, you are going to obtain a carbo you are going to obtain an amide. Now, when you obtain an amide, G, all right. What else? Because if you look at it, the, um, here I'm having two carbon atoms. All right, so I mean, I make sure that I do, but I, I, I will figure out a way in order to remove this one to, uh, to be left with two carbon atoms. Okay, so what I do is I'm going to carry an Hoffman degradation reaction so that I'm going to have CH3 at the end. I will have CH3, uh, CH2, NH2. All right, so removing this one, and my reagent is going to be um, bromine. In sodium hydroxide, okay, bromine in sodium hydroxide under heat, okay, bromine in sodium hydroxide under heat. Remember, that's a Hohmann degradation reagent, and so it's going to remove this CO and will be left with an amine. So, this amine can be converted to an alcohol, which is CH3, CH2OH, all right, using nitrous acid that is sodium nitride in. Uh, Sodium nitride in dilute HCl below 5 degrees Celsius, as we already saw, you convert the amine group to OH group, okay, and I obtain my alcohol. Now, from this alcohol, I can now be able to dehydrate the alcohol to obtain A. And so, dehydration reaction is done using excess, uh, dehydration of acid is done using excess concentrated sulfuric acid, alright, at 170 degrees to 180 degrees Celsius, okay? So this is my reagent here, and that's my reaction condition. Please, when they ask the reaction conditions, they are they ask for temperature, pressure, heat, okay? Anything which has a molecular formula is not, uh, is not, is not a reaction condition, it's actually a reagent. So please, this is it. If you look at it, it was very easy to figure out. You had just to figure out that this is a two carbon atom molecule. And here, probably, from the analytic theory, so it should be obtained from, and we know what it's obtained from. So this was a step up, and this is a step down. I want you to know that you are fine. Okay? Then now, let's look at the latter part below here. We have Z converted to E, and E is converted to, to F. Looking at the structure of F, alright, I see that I'm having, my, I'm having a carboxylic acid group. Okay, remember this is a carboxylic acid here, and I'm having another... I'm, I'm still having the carboxylic acid group there intact. It has not been in a, it has not been tampered with. So I now know that I'm seeing an OH here okay, attached to this carbon atom. So what was the OH okay, which was added here replacing? 
Okay, remember most of the times it's usually halogens. So it's surely that we surely added a halogen to this um ethanol to this um carboxylic acid. We added a halogen to the carboxylic acid and it attached itself on the side chain here. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, okay, as a side chain. And then when we now added potassium and the under reflux, the OH now replaced the serum. That's true, a uh, nucleophilic substitution mechanism. But let's uh, let's try to figure this out. Now, how do I how do I add the halogen to the compound? Do I how do I add the halogen? Do I add it as PCl5 or do I add it as um, as chlorine? Okay, if it was chlorine, for example, you could see the chlorine or bromine. But you see, when you're adding a halogen to a compound, if if I wanted it to be if this uh, carboxylic acid group had been tampered with, meaning that if I saw something like CH3, CH2, um, COCl, all right, meaning that I saw something like if I wanted to write the formula CCl. Like an acid chloride. I know that, okay, surely it was PCL5 that was used somewhere. Okay, PCL5 has been used. Because the PCL5, remember, reacts with the OH. The PCL5 is used to test for the OH in alcohols, the, the pH, uh, sorry, the OH in alcohols, the OH in water, and the OH in carboxylic acids. And each time it goes in there, it replaces the OH there with a CL. All right? So, what happens, uh, and then the CL, of course, will react with part of the hydrogen there to form. Um, to form um, steel white films of HCl gas. Okay, so here the, it was not PCl5 that was added because the carboxylic acid group is still intact. So if you want to add the halogen as a side chain, all right, you add the halogen in the presence of UV light. So if I was adding chlorine, I can add chlorine here in UV light. Please, this is example is going to help you in um, GC 2009. So chlorine in UV light. Okay, it can be added. And what it does is that we are going to have CH3, CH, okay, CL. Right, we have CHCL, and then we have um, COOH. So when you add chlorine in UV light, it's going to a substitute as a side. So it's going to substitute one of the hydrogen atoms here, okay, and and, and it's a side chain. Uh, sorry, as a, uh, a substitute molecule. Now, when you add potassium hydroxide to it. Okay, the OH there is going to replace CL through electro, uh, sorry, through nucleophilic substitution mechanism in order to give us um, two hydroxy uh, propanoic acid, two hydroxy propanoic acid, and this two hydroxy propanoic acid, okay, is what we call lactic acid in biology. All right, so that is how simple the synthetic roots are. So in most synthetic roots, when you look at it, it is going to be the same thing. Over and over. So you just make sure that from here, from this uh, video, you get other synthetic roots and fatty synthetic roots, and then you try, you know, brushing them. Okay. So please just take a look at it, and then well, I'm going to give you some few uh, conversions uh, which involve uh, aromatic compounds. Okay. Alright, now there are some conversions for aromatic compounds. We saw some conversions of benzene when we were doing um, uh, electrophilic substitution reaction in benzene. Now, you could have, we already know about nitration, so they could tell you to convert benzene. Okay, how can you be able to convert benzene to phenylamine in two steps? Okay, conversion of benzene to phenylamine in two steps. So what you do is that uh, the conversion is a synthetic root, it will simply be in two steps. So I'm going to have something like this. This is going to be benzene. Okay. This is going to be benzene. And uh, from benzene here, okay, I can be able to convert the benzene first of all to nitro benzene, NO2. Okay. And so here I use concentrated. So, hoy acid, okay, in con and concentrated nitric acid. So, equal molar concentration is called, um, equal molar concentration of sulfuric acid and nitric acid is called a nitrating mixture. So, this is added at 55 to 60 degrees Celsius under reflux, okay. 
And when you add this to benzene, you're going to obtain nitrobenzene. Then from nitrobenzene, you can be able to move to phenylamine. Can be able to move to phenylamine. All right. And uh, you, you can either use tin, okay, or iron. So you can use tin or iron in dilute ACL. All right. Tin or iron in dilute ACL. Okay. And most of the times, use um, sodium hydroxide in order to remove some impurities which is going to appear in the product. Okay, and you do this, the reaction condition here is heat. Okay, you can add tin or iron, so you can use any of the two. So you can say tin in dilute ACL, or you can say iron in dilute ACL, uh, comma carbon uh, sodium hydroxide. The function of sodium hydroxide is to remove some impurities, and then they, uh, and then you heat. Okay, now. Here is not the same. If you ask, for example, if you are you want to convert this, you cannot convert this thing to uh, phenol, right? You cannot just convert it to phenol, you know, like this, all right? It is going to be you cannot convert it directly. You must pass through a stage. Now, what happens is that if I add uh, because we have been seeing this in the aliphatic compound, so if I add sodium nitrate in HCl below five degrees Celsius, what I'm going to obtain is not going to be uh, it's not going to be uh, phenol, all right? This one will not transform to OH, okay? It's because the environment here is different. So I'm going to rather obtain what we call a, a benzene diazonium salt, all right? I'm going to obtain a benzene diazonium salt. So I'll obtain something like this. So I'll have this. So I'm going to obtain a benzene diazonium salt, and this one I call it, it's going to be called benzene diazonium chloride. Now it is this one now that can be converted to phenol. This one can this benzene that is in so cannot be converted to different types of compounds. Now, if you add um, um, uh, for sorry acid to this one, okay, and you heat, you are going to surely obtain phenol, okay, at this stage. But what I wanted to note to you is that you cannot convert the NH to the amine group to phenol directly, okay, uh, um, as when it is the NH to is found the benzene ring, okay, and this one will be phenyl amine, so you cannot convert it to phenol directly. You must pass through. Uh, you have to pass through this intermediate first, and this, from this, this benzene diazonium salt is very, very, very important. Okay, it's very important because you can pass from here to convert to, you know, a cyanide. Uh, 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 you can replace this one with the cyanide. Okay, you can replace it with bromide. Okay, by using different reagents and reaction conditions. But this is where we're supposed to end. I just explain this one for you to, you know, get. Get um, acquainted with some stuff. Now, another thing again is we always saw. Please, you can go back to the previous video that we had on. Uh, you can go back to the previous video that we had on 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 um, electrophilic substitution. I gave how you could be able to convert how you could be able to convert benzene to methyl benzene. Okay, and I actually explained the mechanism there. But one other thing is, if I have a compound like this. So I have a compound this way. If I have a compound this way, uh, say NH um, NO2, and then I have um, CH3. Yeah. From, um, or let's say benzene, how can benzene be converted to this? Okay, how can benzene be converted to that? In two steps, how can benzene be converted to that? The very first thing that I'm going to do is first of all to ask myself how many groups are there on the compound? Alright, how many groups or as now many uh, substituent groups are there on the benzene ring? There are two of them. Now remember the concepts of auto para directing groups, okay, and meta directing groups. Auto para are reactivating and uh, you know uh, meta groups are uh, are ring deactivating. Auto para group directs position two, position four, and position six, while meta group directs position three and position five. So the very first thing I ask myself is which compound was added first? So which one is a meta group here and which one is uh, and is 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 I or which one which species here is ring activating and which one is ring deactivating? From the examples you are going to see when you are when you are studying, you see that NO2, okay, NO2 rather tends to withdraw electrons from the benzene ring. 
YCH3, okay, rather is going to tend to donate electrons to the benzene ring. So it means CH3, remember, is auto para directing, and NO2 is rather meta directing. Alright? It's, it's meta directing. Okay? So you ask yourself which of these two groups was added first. Okay, you ask yourself which of the two groups was added first. So if I add, for example, this CH3 here is some of the 73. So it means that if I add NO2, alright, you'll be able to direct this NO2. Uh, be able to, so if I add NO2, then it means that CH3 should be the incoming group. So you can be able to um, direct CH3 to position 3. Okay. Now what if the NO2 is rather here and the CH3 is here? Okay. You see, it is, it, it's going to be a little bit quite confusing because when somebody sees this, you just see okay, the methyl group was added first. You first carry out the reaction for the addition of methyl group and then you follow by nitration. No, it is not going to be like that. The first thing you have, as we have already said, that CH3 is reactivating and NO2 group is ring deactivating. Now, that is okay. We know that. Now, this one will direct to position 2. So it means that if CH3 was added first, it is going to direct the NO2 group to position 2 or to position 4, alright? Or to this position here, alright? But instead, NO2 group is on position 3. So it means that this one cannot be added first because if this one is added first, this is position 2, 4 or 6 cannot be empty. So the thing is, okay, it means NO2 was first of all added to this group so that this should be position 1. And then you direct this incoming CH3 to position 3. So what I mean is, I will, can, if I want to do the conversion, I'll first of all convert benzene to nitro, nitro benzene like that, okay? Uh, using concentrated sulfuric acid in concentrated nitric acid, okay? At 55 to 60 degrees Celsius under reflux. Okay, and then I can now be able to make it uh, to accumulate it. So using CH3 CL in um, using a halogen carrier and, and I heat and I'm going to obtain since the nitro group is uh, meta directing, it will direct the CH3 group which is coming into position 3. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, can direct it to this position CH3 O. Okay, that is it. So, hope you had an exciting moment. Thank you very much for watching. And um, I think oh, you can still follow up. We are going to be releasing more videos on organic chemistry and other parts of chemistry as well. We have, um, so far, we have some videos on, uh, on um, acid-based equilibrium. We have, of course, videos on synthetic roots. We have videos on reaction uh, uh, reagents reaction and reaction mechanisms we have videos in biology we have videos in uh, in physics okay there are some videos in physics and there are other videos in uh, in maths all right there are videos in maths and there is also a video in um, further mathematics okay further math mechanics so thank you very much for watching and see you next time just um, take a look at it before we end